morning and welcome as we gather together on this first Sunday of Lent. We begin our journey toward Jerusalem, Good Friday and Easter. We gather together in faith and in love of one another and of our community to bless one another, to worship God, to be together. Thank you to Joanne Morrison, Larry Morrison, Trent Harrelson, Margaret Sarita, and Sandy Olenberger for all the work they do in ensuring these Zoom services happen during this pandemic time. As things shift and move, as we look forward to the future, we also look forward to being together in worship at some point soon. We hope you're all well and things are going well. A reminder that this Tuesday at 11 o'clock, there will be an opportunity to be together at the church as we begin a Lenten study called Faith on the Move Together. Uh, there are study books or uh, reflection books available. Uh, if you'd like to order a copy, you can call the office. They're currently uh, waiting an order of them at the distributors and they will be about three weeks, I think, before they come in. The cost of the books are $15 each and uh, the, uh, the plus the shipping costs of the books. Um, if you'd like to join us on Tuesday mornings, you're welcome to come in and be a part of the webinar experience that's happening at 11 o'clock. Uh, come and join us. We'll be in the sanctuary. We'll be distanced with lots of room for all those who wish to come. And uh, masks are required as you come together. Uh, there will be a time of movement afterwards. We'll go out for a walk or do something of that sort together as the weather warms. Hopefully the ability to be outside and appreciate the world we live in uh, will be a part of the experience. Blessings today as you gather for worship. We hope you enjoy the service this morning. Let's join in worship. Gather in wherever you are this morning, despite whatever doors are locked. We have found a way to be together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. And as God's people, we make a sacred commitment to open our minds and hearts to what word the Spirit might offer, to what nudging, what questions, what grace might be given in this time. Let us join in this time of worship. Let us pray. Gracious God, we want to see your goodness in the land of the living here and now, in this world of flesh and blood, in the midst of deep fears and desperate hopes. Give us grace to put our trust in your mercy, even when our hearts cry out in fear. Help us notice the whisper of your presence amid all the noise and the news that clamor and threaten. 
Let your love be like a healing stream. Flow through us and carry us onward to a new day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as come out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my foes 
gloat over me. Let none who wait for you be shamed. Let them be shamed who wantonly break faith. Show me your ways. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O God, and your steadfast love, for they are as old as time. Do not remember the sins and offenses of my youth. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O God. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven spoke, You are my Son, the Beloved. In you I am well pleased. Then immediately, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Throughout these land and days and nights, we turn to walk the inward way. We're meeting Christ, our guide and light. We live in hope till Easter Day.
Let's join together in prayer. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, and the actions of our lives always be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beginning of Lent, and we're starting on a journey together that's going to last several weeks. By the end of it, we will be hearing the stories of Palm Sunday, of Good Friday, of Holy Week, and of Easter. We'll be reminded again of the cycle of life that is a part of our being. The movement from birth through life towards death and rebirth. Jesus begins today in the reading going to John the Baptist for baptism. We heard the story several weeks ago on the baptism of Christ Sunday, but we're reminded today that this was a significant event in Jesus's ministry, for it was the time at which he began his public ministry, going out, collecting, and gathering the disciples around him, and then traveling throughout Galilee and Judea toward Jerusalem, healing, teaching, walking with those who were a part of his journey. Our journey is not dissimilar. Our ministries, whatever they may be, take us through life on different paths, and yet together we find ourselves walking in community with one another. Jesus begins after the baptism going into the wilderness, tempted by Satan, by power and food, and by the possibility of ownership of creation. And we know that in our lives, wilderness times come and go. We have times of growth and times when we feel like we hit walls around us. Times when we're challenged by the circumstances of the world around us that are beyond our control. I think of this pandemic time now almost a year long and our experience as part of that journey. For many, it's been a difficult time, a time of isolation and loneliness, a time when reaching out to others meant staying at a distance. I think of those who have lost loved ones and not been able to celebrate their lives with services, with celebrations of life, life for funerals, whatever we wish to call them. I think of those who live alone and find themselves even more isolated than some of us who are lucky enough to have family around or nearby. I think of grandparents who haven't gone, who have gone for over a year now, 
not seeing grandchildren, not being in touch with families in the way that we're used to doing. All of that has been challenging and difficult times. It's been tempting to break our isolation and to reach out to the others around us. It's been tempting to find ways to avoid the restrictions that the government are placing on us. This time in the wilderness, this time of Lent in our lives is an opportunity for us to take stock and to reflect on who we are and what we are. It's a time to look inside to ourselves and consider those things that are temptations to us. I don't mean chocolates or candy or sweets or alcohol or all of those things. I think of the temptations of life that become habits for us. The temptations to see others as somehow separate from ourselves and not in this as we are together. The temptation to dismiss those around us who want to do things in different ways the temptation to dismiss those who don't look the same as we do, that don't share the same outlooks on life's life about gender, about sexuality, about all of those things in the same way we do, and to try and ostracize them. Sometimes not an intentional ostracism, but sometimes simply by putting them to the side and dismissing them as irrelevant to our lives. Those are temptations that shape and affect our communities. The temptations that we face around power are somehow no different than the temptations of Jesus. In the coming days and weeks, we'll hear stories from scripture that tell us of Jesus's ministry, tell us of the ways in which he reached out and showed compassion to others in ways that we are called to do. Someone came to me the other day to talk about their neighbors. They struggled with a neighbor who has an addiction to drugs, perhaps, whose behavior interferes with their lives because they hear them moving around and shifting in the rooms in another part of the house that they share, wondering how they can help this individual whose problems with drugs becomes distracting not only to them, but to the world around them. These problems with drugs are causing difficulty in their lives. The only easy answer that I have is to reach out to those organizations around us that help. Calling the crisis line at 211 offered them a way in which they could offer their neighbor assistance. I was reminded that the rules that we're called to follow are the commandments of Jesus to love God with all our heart, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Ultimately, those are the ways of life which we turn towards during this time of Lent. And it is a time as the daylight grows, as spring comes closer for us to look at the ways in which we both do that effectively and the ways in which we could do it better. Reminded that Christ's love, God's love is ultimately what we seek to emulate in our world. The time of Lent invites us to reflect on the ways in which 
we block that love from happening and to open ourselves to new ways of living, to turn toward Jerusalem and to offer ourselves up for God's love in the world, building God's kingdom. Amen. join together in prayer. O God of the covenant, who turned the waters from a cause of death to a source of life, we praise you for our baptism received in Christ's name. We give thanks that through him you saw fit to set us apart for ministry. You gave us the rainbow as a sign of your covenant, an everlasting sign that you will never separate yourself from us. You have given your spirit to rest upon us and dwell within us so that we are empowered for service. Truly in you we live and move and have our being. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end of our existence. By you alone are we sustained and upheld. Continue to make your presence known as we face the barren times of life. Help us to see in creation the manifold signs of your care for us. And still within us confidence to trust in you, courage to face the powers that threaten us, boldness to praise your name despite all difficulty. Set your covenant rainbow above us as a sign of your faithfulness and beyond us as a beckoning light of your righteous love. When Christ bids us come, Give us strength to forsake all earthly ties and follow him. Help us to catch a vision of what you would have us do. Give us signs of assurance that assist us to obey. Frustrate our efforts when we are headstrong and ignorant. Keep us faithful to our baptism and open to the leading of your spirit 
as recipients of your covenant. In grace, sustain us as we respond in prayer using the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. hand is offered to us. Much like a child takes the hand of a parent, we can take God's hand and move forward in the assurance that we are not alone. We are helped by the strength greater than our own. Thanks be to God. Amen.